With the coronavirus, Panama has completely shut down. People are only allowed to leave their homes for two hours a day. Only women are allowed in town, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So bizarre, it feels a little bit like a science fiction set. I'm still pretty freaked out. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. For the past couple months, we've been preparing for our Pacific crossing in Bocas del Toro, Panama. But the coronavirus pandemic has forced us to change our plans and we are now making final preparations to go off grid in search of social isolation. Okay, good morning. Well, this uh, broken air filter is definitely going to be a problem for us. We, we can't go anywhere, can't do anything until we get this fixed. Because of the coronavirus, there's not a lot that we can do. We, we go to the mainland to try to find this part in one of the bigger towns. But with the coronavirus, I mean, in just the last couple of days, Panama has completely shut down. Uh, all non-essential businesses are closed. Uh, if you're not a resident of Panama or a citizen, then you can't actually take the ferry boats to the mainland because they want to completely stop uh, tourist traffic and movement. Um, and so our options have become severely limited very, very quickly. I think one of the reasons why Panama is being so aggressive at trying to contain the spread of the virus is that their healthcare infrastructure or system is a lot more vulnerable than in places like in the States. And so for them here, uh, they need to really, really flatten the curve or else their healthcare system will become completely overwhelmed. Another good reason for us to get the heck out of here and you know, do some off-grid cruising. We've got one more thing to ask of global civilization before we can duck out. So the first thing that we need to do is to figure out if the air mailing service that we use is still functioning. Um, it's called Mailboxes Etc. Well, so yeah, Patrick from Mailboxes Etc. just got back to me and he said that cargo is considered in essential business, so they're gonna be up and running. So it sounds like we shouldn't have any problem getting a part in the mail. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, well then that means that I'm gonna contact Beta Marine. Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Jordan. I was just calling a moment ago to talk to Farron about an air filter. Yeah, I mean, it might just been so clogged or damp. It sucked itself in like that. I've never seen one do that before, so. It, it's real dark, so could it be, like, belt dust? Could 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 a belt yeah, produce that much dust? Yeah, belts can. If the belt's slipping, it could bring out a lot of dust. And that could eventually clog it. Well, I'll definitely uh, be inspecting it more often then. Um, is this a generic Kubota part as well? No, that is not Kubota. Um, it's made for that specific air cleaner. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's basically all my questions. So do you want me to order the part through you or through Lisa? All right, so while we're waiting for that air filter to get here, we've got plenty to do. My next step is I've got to tune the rig. When we put the masts on, we just put them in place and then real quickly tightened all the shrouds and stays until the mast wasn't gonna go anywhere. Now I've gotta make sure that the masts are perfectly straight, uh, both fore and aft and athwart ship. So the first thing to do is see how well the mass is lined up from side to side. So to accomplish that, I'm gonna take my jib halyard and just put it to the deck right at the base of the upper shroud. I'm gonna do that here on the port side. And then I'll take this over to starboard side and see if it's the same distance. Yeah, so it looks like the whole thing has gotta come this way a little bit. Yeah, after going back and forth about a dozen times, we are good to go port to starboard. Now I've still got to do the 
upper shrouds, um, I'm just gonna do exactly the same process, except now, as I adjust things, I'm also gonna sight up the mast to make sure that it's not bending in any sort of weird way. Um, Alright, so the mast is looking nice and straight from side to side. So now we've got to make sure it's going straight up and down, fore and aft. I'm just going to use a uh, spray bottle here on our main halyard. And more or less, I'm just going to suspend that and then see if it wants to kind of work its way aft or forward or what. So as you can see, because it's you know resting quite a ways away from the mast aft, that means that the head of the mast has got to go forward a little bit. Okay, let's see how it looks now. <laughs> the boat's listing to port because Desiree and I are both on the port side, so it's coming way over here. But the good thing is that it's resting pretty much right flush with the mast four to aft. Now we gotta go around and make sure that all of the shrouds and stays have the appropriate amount of tension. I'm gonna be using this uh, Loose & Co professional tension gauge, which is uh, way more expensive than it looks. <laughs> I think that's it. I think the main mast is tuned. That took me the better part of the day. Um, I'm not good at tuning rigs and it really is confusing at times. And I'll adjust one wire, but that'll make a difference to another wire. And I'll just have to keep making adjustments going back and forth, back and forth until everything seems to be happy. But I think I've got just enough time left in the day to go tune the mizzen mast and it's just the same exact process. So I'll do that and uh, I'll be done for the day. All right, next project I'm starting today to get us ready to go off grid is to inspect our mizzen and main sails. Um, I just want to give them a once over, uh, check the thread, check the fabric, see if there's any tears or high chafe areas. So I learned a lot by doing a couple sail repairs while we were in Isla Mujeres and Key West. But what I learned about sail inspection is basically to start with a thread. So I just take my finger and see if I can pop any of the um, threads with just my finger. Next thing I'm going to do is kind of just look over the sail and look for any discoloration or areas that might imply something's happening to the sail to cause it problems to tear or chafe. So I actually just found it's really subtle, but it looks like there's discoloration all the way up this sail. So it makes me think maybe there's a shroud here that touches it when we're under sail. One thing that I can do to make sure that the material here hasn't been compromised, I'm gonna take the sail between my fingers and try as hard as I can to rip it one way, looks good, and then rip it the other way. Cool. Okay, the last thing I do is check all the fittings and hardware on the sail just to make sure there's no problems. All the hardware on the mizzen looks good except for this right here. And this is the jam cleat for the leech line. And I can see that the rivet actually broke. So I'm just gonna pop this out and replace it with a bolt. All right, well, the mizzen was good to go. So I just spent about an hour inspecting the main sail and I found a couple of pop stitches right here on the foot of the sail. So I'm just gonna sew up these pop stitches and maybe add some chafe protection because I'm not really sure what was hitting the sail there to begin with. It's so hot, I'm sweating in my eyes. Oh my God.
to do before we can put our mainsail back up is I found a couple of uh, high chafe areas on our batten pockets. This is the biggest hole I found on the sail and you can see it's on the batten pocket which already is super reinforced. So it's just this top layer here. The other hole is right here and it is also really, really small. After thinking about it and talking to Sailrite, I decided not uh, to patch up these holes by disassembling them and actually sewing on a patch. I'm actually just gonna use a really cool material called Tear Aid. I've had it on the boat for a long time, hoping I could get a chance to use it. And today's the day. and putting Atticus back together is putting the booms back on. So that's our next project. is I'm gonna reattach our lifelines. Piece by piece, Atticus is becoming a sailboat again. <laughs> Project is we've got to reroute our electrical wires from the main mast down into the boat. But we can't use the old through deck clams because those holes for the through deck clams are now covered by the new main mast base, which is just a lot wider than the old one used to be. So I'm gonna drill new holes, reinstall these through deck clams, and then reroute the wire. <laughs> again trying to get our air filter situation all sorted out in just the last couple of days Panama has really started to shut down big time due to the coronavirus the company that we were going through to have things mailed here they use Air Panama the domestic flight airline and uh, Air Panama is shut down. Almost all businesses are shut down right now. And in fact, there's a really strict curfew going on right now. So people are only allowed to leave their homes to go grocery shopping or to pick up medication for two hours a day. And the time that you're allowed to go into town correlates with the last number on either your Panamanian ID or your passport. So long story short, we're not going to get our air filters anytime soon. We've talked to a handful of people about how we could jerry-rig an air filter, and it sounds like the best thing that we could do is to use some wire mesh. So a friend of ours here in the marina had some spare wire screen, and yeah, I'm just gonna cut some of this and clamp it onto the intake, and that should do the trick for a little while until we are able to get the actual filters in. Alright, well 
I'm getting ready to go into town one last time. We were delayed a little bit with the air filter, so I've got another opportunity to stock up on some fresh vegetables for our off-grid adventure. Meanwhile, the Panamanian government has become super strict um, as far as the lockdown regulations. So we actually just received notice yesterday that only women are allowed in town Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and men are only allowed in town Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So I'm getting ready to head into town and hang out with the Panamanian ladies. All right, well, I made it to town and it is super quiet. A lot more quiet than it was last time we came into town. So bizarre, it feels a little bit like a science fiction set. Just walking down the middle of the road, only women out. Oh crap, this place is looking at this dude and asking him for his ID. I don't think he got the memo. There's a police car. Hopefully they don't uh, ask me for my papers, even though I have them in my bag. I'm ready to go. Probably look a little bit crazy, but heading into one of the, the grocery stores and they've got these really cool contraptions to kind of protect the um, cashier. It is totally kind of empty out here. And then the other thing that's crazy is the Panamanian government made it illegal to sell alcohol. So, yeah, it's kind of bizarre times. Still lots of stuff on the shelves. All right, made it back to the marina and being in town was so crazy for me. It was just eerily bizarre. And it makes me think how I've really taken a lot of systems for granted in my life, um, like the global economy and just Amazon and the ability to go where I want freely and to purchase what I need um, very easily, even in a place like Boca del Toro. I think I and a lot of people kind of go through life with plans and these thoughts that tomorrow is going to be this way because it's always been this way. But this pandemic has kind of taught me personally that we can't really rely on our plans and our idea of the future because we won't always have control of it. Some things are just out of our control. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy. Um, and for those of you who are out there on the front lines, um, for those of you who are doctors and nurses and medical providers right now, thank you so much for keeping us safe and for putting in the long hours. And I can't even imagine how stressful your life is right now. Um, but thank you from some random girl in Panama for keeping us safe. <sighs> All right. Oh. Hey guys, thanks for watching the episode. I wanted to take a quick second to let you know about a fundraiser that we're involved with. It's called the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund for the World Health Organization. Here in Panama, we can clearly see that this virus is going to have a much worse effect on developing countries than in first world countries like in the US. And we just think that this is a great opportunity to help people who are less fortunate than we are. Now the purpose of the fund is to track and understand the spread of the virus to ensure that patients get the care that they need as well as that frontline workers get the supplies and information that they need and to accelerate efforts to develop vaccines, tests, and treatments. For every dollar that you donate, Google will actually match it with two dollars. So that's huge. So for those of us who are financially able to donate, I really think that we can make a big difference here. Now, depending on what platform you're watching this video on, if you're on a PC or a tablet, if you minimize the video and look up in the top right hand corner of your screen, you should see a donate button. If you're on a phone, then just look below the video, you should see a donate button there. Just click donate, choose a dollar amount, and boom, Google's gonna match every dollar that you donate with two dollars. Other than that, we hope you guys stay safe and healthy wherever you are, and we'll catch you guys next Thursday.